I good? Yeah. I'm very good. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Oh, judging by the crowd, someone must have let out that I was up tonight. I don't know. It's, you people, I'll probably be talking over here most because there's only a couple of you over there. Um, a little discombobulated right before I came up. I threw my Bible on the floor, and that's where I keep everything. So, one moment. Hold, please. Welcome, everybody, online. Um, I always start every time with something of honor. Oh, by the way, honor is part of me. I wrote a book. There's four. If anyone wants one, they're right there. Um, the reason I start with honor, at first off, Rhonda and I are really honored to be part of this church. And as that, I want to honor you and all the people that aren't here, because we stepped into something pretty amazing here. And that points back to the faithfulness and the wars that you guys have fought that Rhonda and I didn't have to... We're, we're gleaning off of everything you guys have planted here over however many years. And we were at our other church for 17 years, so we know the ups and downs and battles that go on in church to maintain something like this. And it's actually, I think it's almost exactly to the day, the one-year date of me visiting this place for the first time. It was a year ago we were... We knew a transition was coming, but we didn't know really what it was. And then I met this guy on, on Facebook, Pastor Don, and I just, I loved the honor that he stood for. You know, it just, it was attractive to me. So we started talking back and forth, and I started threatening, I'm going to come down and visit this church years. And uh, so finally we put it on the calendar, and he was gracious enough to clear most of five days. You guys know how busy he is. And so I just right away I was honored by that. I, I knew everything that the guy does. Well, now I know everything he does. Back then I had kind of thought. But uh, he took time, and, and uh, I fell in love with Don. I fell in love with this place, and I fell in love with Bradenton, which is not me. I'd rather be sitting in a tree in Wisconsin than to be anywhere near a city. So I'm staying in this town, downtown, and I'm telling Rhonda about this love, and I'm just weeping over the city. And she says, hmm, I think I know something about where the transition is. And so it's just amazing, in one year's time, everything that happened. Um, so the reason I always start with honor is because it's impossible to be proud and honoring at the same time. One will displace the other. The last thing I want to do is be less than honoring and anything near proud when I'm up here. So I always start with that. And we need to start with some prayer. You guys know that the devil is a defeated foe, right? He has no power. He has no creativity. He lost access to anything of the spirit when him and a third of the angels were cast down to earth. He has no access to any of that. So he operates in the exact same fashion as he did in Genesis. He plants seeds of doubt. Did God really say? Oh, he just doesn't want you, because if you eat that, you'll be all-knowing like him. And he plants those seeds, that stuff like that. The only way he can do anything with us since he has no power, he can only enter, a, he can only deceive us through our soul. That's what we feel and what we think. <clears throat> so, we're going to do a repeat after me prayer. Lay hands on yourself. There and there. It's what you think and what you feel. It's the only, it's, It's the only place that we can be distracted or deceived. So, repeat after me. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit 
Renew my mind to think only as Jesus thinks and, to, and my eyes to see only as Jesus sees. And plant in my heart, Father, your heart. Prepare my head, prepare my heart to receive this vaccination that we're about to hear. Amen. So we are in uh, we are in revival. That's, that's what I that's what I mean. Everything you guys have done up to this point to lead to this point, we're just getting started. You know, my hairs are all standing up when I say that. That's a, the Holy Spirit agrees. Um, the only thing that can get in the way of what God is beginning here is us. What we feel and what we think is that. The mouth reveals the issues of the heart. So we've got to guard ourselves. And so there's going to be a lot of that today. And the reason I said prepare for the vaccination is because this, what I'm going to teach tonight, is a vaccination that if we can grab this and walk in it, we will not be the cause of this revival of getting led astray, diverted. Because... You know, I, I, I don't know as much as some about past revivals, but I do know how some ended. Out of sheer weariness, out of pride, and a few other, a few other things like that. And so this also, I'm teaching tonight authority and promotion from a kingdom perspective. It's not the same as, as in the world. You know, and so <clears throat> this is a vaccination, and and there's I don't know, forty, fifty people here. So we're going to vaccinate you, and then you're going to go out, and herd immunity is going to happen as you run into everyone else. Okay. I didn't want to scare you with the vaccination right in the prayer there, you know, but you know. Um, he's doing a new thing, and and uh, and we want to be prepared to carry the rest. One thing Bill Johnson has done brilliantly is he has as far as I know, it's the longest running revival that's been around. Or what Dave, you might know, 20 some years or something. Yeah, I don't think I've never heard of a revival going that long. What he did is he didn't carry the whole revival on himself. Yeah. He empowered the people yeah. around him, and it was spread out, and it was a team effort. <clears throat> and he also has, if you've listened to him teach much, he always, not always, but he very powerfully teaches of issues of the heart and what we do on an individual basis that affects the corporate. So Pastor Don has this amazing uh, overarching message for the church. And for that to play out, we have to take our individual responsibility so that when we show up here, what he spreads out there catches fire, just like worship. Dave is one of the worship leaders. The rest of them are all out there. Amen. Dave, can you tell the difference when people walk in with their worship? Amen. It's a lifestyle. So is revival. It doesn't happen on Sundays and Wednesdays. Revival, it can, it can, the fire can start here, but it is maintained by what we do. So, I'm going to start with authority, some thoughts on authority. And uh, I'm more of a teacher than a preacher. Rhonda and I um, have never aspired to be senior pastors. We've always been supporting cast. And I love it. First off, I don't get all the phone calls Pastor Don does. <laughs> you know? 
but I get, um, we've, over the years, just by longevity, I guess, we've turned into moms and dads. You know, where we were, you know, we were called mama and papa, you know, and not even close to what they called me when I walked in the door. But anyways, longevity changes things. And we have, we've left some sons and daughters there. And as we've worked with them, it has really made a difference in body health. And Rhonda and I are, are very family oriented in church. We have family culture, building sons and daughters. And I'm getting ahead of myself. I do that all the time. I take really good notes. Sometimes I use them. Um, we left some sons and daughters back there. and um, Spiritual fatherhood and spiritual mom, spiritual dad, spiritual son, spiritual daughter is a very powerful truth, but it also has turned into kind of a catchphrase. There's a difference between real spiritual parents, authentic, and ones that would like to be seen as that and they try to be that. It takes an authenticity. And uh, one, of the, one of the markers is that we've seen over the years is a popular phrase is, son, daughter, I want my ceiling to be your floor. But then as you grow and you gain influence and you start walking and you're calling, they go, oh, but I didn't want you to grow that much until I'm gone. When Rhonda and I say that, and we, we left a spiritual son back home and some daughters, they know I'm preaching. Hi, Tyler and Alicia, if you're there. Um, Tyler is a spiritual son that moved in with us and he came down, Impact Ministries was a faith-based residential for men with addictions, and they moved in with us. It was supposed to be a six-month program. Tyler lived with us for five years. <laughs> you know, we had ups, we had downs. Um, Tyler, I'm going to be vulnerable on your behalf. He broke every rule. You know, you, you got you to gotta sign the rules when they come in. And uh, so that I, not because I want to visit them, because I have a lot of grace, but I need, a, I need a legal basis that if it's too dangerous, I can say, you sign this, you have to go. And I never had to put him out. He always put himself out for legal purposes. Um, the last time, this really broke the rules. There was four squads with guns out pulled out of into my driveway. Well, he moved out for about eight or ten months at that point, and, uh, and this is not even where I was going at all. But I, he was in he was in the police car because he was on his way home for a meeting with Rhonda and I, because I knew he wasn't doing well to discuss his new level of accountability. And he pulled in and waved out the window, and a cop pulled up behind, and a bunch more, and they're. <laughs> You know, they don't get that much action in rural conversation, uh, Wisconsin, so they're like Barney Fife out there, you know. It made me nervous how much he was shaking. But uh, after they got him in the car, I said, sir, can I, have a, can I have a word with him? I said, yeah. I said, Tyler, I love you. We're going to get through this. And he said it was at that moment that every cha that was a game changer for him. It's insert love in these defining moments, Sherry Silk does a message on it called Insert Love. I've listened to it several times. Defining moments in life. Amber would know this well. Sometimes when you're in the worst place, that's the best opportunity to insert love. It's a game changer. And that was a game changer. This is about three and a half years into his five years. He came out of there and uh, I picked him up when he got released, brought him back home, and I said, what's your plan? And he says, well, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do this. I said, that's a very good plan. You can unpack. And then he moved back in, and, and it was that moment of loving him when he was unlovable and being there like a dad would be to his natural child. 
spiritual fathers that are not authentic will abandon you because of behavior. It requires to be able to see through the blood of Jesus. The reason, the reason Jesus was put in us and us in him when he was on the cross. So now when the Father looks at us through the cross, he sees the Jesus in us. He sees the purpose and potential. So now he is flourishing. And when, when Rhonda and I moved to a different place, I had to inform him we wouldn't have a bedroom at the next house, you know. And so we found this place called Onyx. It's, it's another sober living place, and they weren't necessi necessarily faith-based. But I knew the lady that ran it, and I said, I got someone you should meet. I think he'd be a good house manager, because by this time, he's just rocking it. He's a new creation, just alive, you know. And uh, so he got a room there in one of the houses she had, and it's six houses probably at that time. And he got a free room to manage that house. Well, I just planted a kingdom seed in that house. And all of a sudden, she's running six houses, and she's going, how come this house is doing so much better than the rest of them? All of that to say, now he has far surpassed Rhonda and I in, in reach. He is now the manager over all of the houses that trains each of them. The lady that was not even a believer is now an on fire kingdom believer and, and all of the houses are doing way better. So we want, we do not want, we want to be authentic in a fashion that we champion and promote sons and daughters and we are not afraid to see them pass us up because Rhonda and I can only reach so many people but you turn sons and daughters loose to be who they are created to be without restraints and you empower them and now you got an army out there and the cool part about it is I get to count his fruit and be when I stand in front of Jesus I'm reaching more people because I let him be who he's supposed to be and do what he's supposed to do. So, there. Now I should go to my notes, huh? All right, authority looks different from a kingdom perspective. A lot of people have been in the corporate world and how you climb the ladder and that, and sometimes you step on people's heads on the way and do what you got to do to work your way up the ladder till you are in the position and then you have the authority. Flip it upside down and you probably got kingdom authority. Jesus himself came in as a suffering servant. All right. So, when we look at authority, we have to look at the Trinity as a model. No, we don't have to, but I'm going to. And it would serve you well to do it also. They are the model of community. Actually, in Genesis... In the creation account, God created the environment and then he put the creature in it. You can start with the land and then he filled it. The sea and then he filled it. And the expanse and then he filled it. He counseled, let us, the Trinity counseled, let us make man in our image. They're the environment we're supposed to live from. That That's... This fits into, Don is supposed to be preaching on laid down lover tonight. This fits in it because that's that place of laid down love where you can actually live from that atmosphere. And all authority comes from there. So this is a laid down lover message. Kind of. I'm making it fit. So all authority comes from God. So what did God do with all of his authority? He gave it to Jesus. All authority I give to you, sit at my right hand. What did Jesus do with his authority? He gave it to us. We are seated in heavenly places. 
was he afraid that we would do more? He said, no, and you will do more than we, than I did. And so <clears throat> I even got three points in this. I don't know that I've ever done that before, but I'm so impressed by the way Don always has points. I thought I'd give it a try. Um, yeah. All authority comes from heaven. Um, in Mark, Jesus says, all authority has been given to me. That verifies that God, what he did with his, he gave the authority away. He empowered Jesus, then gave his authority away. He empowered us. So that's a model of what kingdom authority looks like. We, it's not a competition. We, we share our authority, and that, that's what we did with, with Tyler. I mean, he was a very, very, very loyal. He's our son. He lived with us. He, we still do. He's coming down here to get married. I mean, he's, he's family, family. And uh, we freely gave that away, and now he's just, he, he's loyal. He went, no, I didn't come down here to be part of Living Word Chapel. I came down here for impact. I am loyal to you guys. I'm loyal to that. I said, you're only going to go so far with us. You are free to do where the opportunities are and where God's called you. I appreciate your loyalty. Be free to be the best kingdom you, you can be, the most effective. And he is. So now he doesn't call us when he has to. He calls us when he wants to. So, um, so now he's a father. And the only way you can be a father in the faith is first to learn how to be an authentic son. There, there, there's, there's no sh shortcuts. Paul called Timothy my true son. Paul also said, you may have 10,000 tutors or teachers, but you have not many fathers. A lot of times tutors or teachers try to be fathers, but unless there's an authenticity and, a, and it's relational, it, it, it's very intimate. You, you can't be afraid of intimacy or you can't pour into the other person. So, if you want to bring up the scripture, John 17, I'm just going to read all the way through it. It's very safe because in my Bible, that whole chapter is red letters. So, but it Don said on Sunday, read the red and do what he said. Right. Right. Yeah. So, a lot of scripture is context for time and place. If it's in red letter, that's for the church ongoing. Right? Okay. John 17, 13, and I'm going to read through uh, 26. I was only going to go through 21, but before church I read down to 26, and i got to make it that far. So I'll read as fast as I can. This is Jesus' last prayer on earth. But now I come to thee, and these th things I speak in the world that they may have my joy be made full in themselves. I have given them thy word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I do not ask thee to take them out of the world. Selah. That, that's <laughs> a theological statement that will serve you well. I did not ask you to take them out of the world, but to keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them in truth. The, thy word is truth. And this, this all goes to, uh, there's little snippets of authority that fit my three points in a minute here. Um, and for their sakes, I sanctify myself that they themselves may also be sanctified. I do not ask in behalf of these alone, but I ask for those that believe in me through their word. So we just got included right there. That they may all be one, even as the Father art in me and I in thee, that they may be in us. Remember what atmosphere we're supposed to live from. Okay. 
The triune God is the atmosphere that we're supposed to live from. That they may be in us, that the world may believe that thou didst say. I love all those parts. All the way through here it says, do this, that the world may believe. And the glory which thou hast given me, I have given to them, that they may be one just as we are one. I in them and thou in me, that they may be perfected in unity, that the world may know that thou didst send me and didst love them, even as thou did love me. Father, I desire that they also, whom you have given me, I'm replacing the thous with the yous, otherwise my tongue gets tangled, um, be with me where I am, in order that they may behold my glory. Right there that they may be with me where I am again, in order that they may behold my glory, which you have given me. And I did love, and for the, you loved me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, although the world has not known you, yet I have known you, and these have known that you did send me. And I have made your name known to them, and will make it known that the love wherewith thou did love me may be in them and I in them. Laid down lovers. In that context is the only way to understand true spiritual authority. So, three points on authority. True authority is always offered, it's never demanded. Authority just is. You, you don't have to defend it. And as soon as you demand it, you're no longer operating in authority, you just cross the line over into a power trip. In the, that's <clears throat> I'm not going to expound on that, or I won't get through this at all. Um, Point number two, all authority comes from God. So, behave accordingly. <laughs> Everyone has a favorite side of the aisle. What do you do when the other guy is in office? All authority comes from God. I think the verse actually after that, the other half of the verse is, says, so honor all authority. You don't have to agree with someone, or particularly even like them, to honor them. All right, the third point is funner, uh, you know. <laughs> yeah, I'm humoring myself in my head and I can't let it out of my mouth right now. Point number three, true authority will empower rather than simply delegate. Bob Hassan, he runs around with uh, Danny Silk. He has a book called The Business of Honor. He's a very successful businessman and he built this business from when he was a college kid with a ladder on top of a VW. He started a painting company with Kingdom Principles, and he is now paint. One of his jobs was the Mile High Theater, or Mile High Stadium in Denver. You know, he's a big time contractor run on this. At the beginning of his book, he, uh, he contrasts two companies. One is Guinness Beer, centuries old company, run on family values, run on empowering. They, pay more than most with better benefits and it's really a family oriented and it's had this slow growth over the years. The other one was an oil company that was also a Forbes 500 company. Um, it was the Exxon, I think it was, or well, that was a bottom line only. And so this was family and the, the tradition of family and empowering everyone in there so everyone felt appreciated and, and you always get more out of someone when they feel appreciated. 
So that's the way that was, and this has consistently grown over centuries and kept that culture. The oil company was bottom line only, and it was run with one genius and a thousand slaves. It was bottom line only. It rose really fast, and it's coming down really fast. So that's the principle of true authority will empower rather than just delegate. It gives ownership, it gives an appreciation, it gives kids room to grow. If, I would, if Ron and I wouldn't have empowered Tyler, they wouldn't be having revival in the sobriety houses up in northern Wisconsin. And they're expanding, man. I think Julie's got like 16 houses or something now. She had four at that time. Kingdom, is, Kingdom Seed is like Lebanon. Planted Tyler in there and said, go, do it. Come on, son. They empower. There's wisdom in this, though. You know, when you empower someone, um, you empower them, but trust is incremental, you know. And, uh, and it's, everything is transferred through relationship. We had 16 guys at Impact. I mean, it started and blew up. The uh, public defenders found out about us and pretty soon there was a pipeline from county jail landing at our house because, hey, I can keep you out of prison if you go here. You know, we ended up being an alternative to revocation. And uh, so we ended up, I don't have much for volunteers. I was basically, Rhonda says not basically, I was living at Impact and visiting home. I had built myself a wonderful ministry of codependency. I was working on these guys harder than they were, you know, at, at the expense of my family, at the expense of, and it effectively turned me into a warden instead of the pastor I was supposed to be. So we had to flip the script on this after Rhonda sent me on a sabbatical because, eh, because I brought that warden image home. <laughs> you know, sometimes your ministry can be the exact thing that gets out of the way with being a laid down lover. And so she sat me down and said, are you depressed or not happy or what's going on with you? Because you're about to wreck some relationships that are important to you. Yeah, I know. I've been talking to God about that. You better talk to someone besides God, sunshine. Oh, Okay. Well, I talked to my pastor and he said, yeah, two weeks sabbatical would be good. I went home and Ron said, no, I'm thinking a month. So I did. I, I, I took a little vacation in the uh, hills of Tennessee. It's me and Jesus, and he visited me the first night and got me back. And then we started, after that, we uh, started taking two or three guys at a time and fully investing relationship. That's where we started becoming mom and dad instead of the pastor slash warden that now whoop you into shape watch me you know i say that with love yeah so <laughs> um so trust is incremental and as you build relationship that trust goes and then you let the leash out farther as you empower people you don't want to you want you know the bible also says don't lay hands too hastily so, truth intention. God trusted me before I was trustworthy. He loved me in my most unlovable state. And that's how that book got its title, Honor Begets Honor. He honored me in my most dishonorable state. That's when he hooked me. Really? You love me right now? Crud. That's not what I said. Crud. You got me. I can follow a God like that. And I, I was rewired from the inside out right there just by that honor. God always, and we have to follow the Trinity model of authority, he always provides what's missing in our experience. He doesn't condemn us. I was unlovable. First, first attribute I met was his love. That's what, and my most dishonorable moment, he honored me. One of the quotes out of that book is, until you can remain honorable in the midst of a dishonorable situation, it's just lip service. 
that that's where that's where the rubber hits the road. You know, um, it would have been would have been easy if I hadn't had that experience with Jesus when Tyler was in the back of that car for me to say, "We're done. Sorry, you may go now." But in that moment, I provided what he was missing. His experience with the church to that point had been, oh, when your behavior isn't right, you're no longer welcome. It's performance-based rather than looking through the blood of Jesus and seeing the purpose and potential. So those three points come from this scripture. Authority is always offered never demanded. All authority comes from God, therefore honor all authority, whether you agree with it or not. If you can't, if you have a hard time with the person, honor the office. It's a beautiful thing. And true authority will empower rather than simply delegate. Uh, trust is incremental. Even Jesus had to humble himself until his time. All right, I'm going to run through one more quick thing, a scripture here that I didn't get you ready for because I didn't know if I'd get to it. First Peter 5, 1 through uh, 7. Therefore, I exhort the elders among you as your fellow elder and witness of the suffering of Christ and partaker also of the glory that is to be revealed. And this is how authority another description of what authority from a Christ perspective looks like. Uh, partaker of the glory that is to be revealed. Shepherd the flock of God among you, exercising oversight, not under compulsion, it's offered, but voluntarily, according to the will of God, and not for sordid gain, but with eagerness, nor yet as lord, lording over those allotted to your charge, but proving to be examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive an unfading crown of glory. For younger men, likewise, be subject to your elders. And all of you, close yourself with humility towards one another. For God is opposed to the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in proper time, casting all anxiety on him. Okay, this is a preamble to, I said I'm talking about authority and promotion, the kingdom perspective. This is leading to promotion, then I'm going to start. What's the pathway? Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. He may exalt you at the proper time. Casting all your anxiety on him. And because I'm me, I have to mention Philippians 4. It's an, ident an identity verse. The word anxiety, I learned this by being, <laughs> just diving into uh, Philippians 4. The word anxiety doesn't mean nervous, anxious. It has that too. But in, in the Greek, it is, distracted or isolated. Philippians 4 says, be anxious over nothing. So don't let things distract you. It says, pray about everything. Don't be distracted by that. That's in the flesh, you know. Um, can have 10,000 good things going on in our life. And one issue and we focus on that. And if we, you become what you behold. If you focus on the negative in your life instead of remaining grateful for all the good stuff, you're, you're falling right in. Remember, the enemy can only distract you through what you feel and what you think. And so if he can get you distracted with the problem instead of the overarching amazing glory, this is again, this is a vaccination for revival. When all these seats are full, there are going to be some people with some issues in here. And, and you have to remain the same. 
created in the image of Christ speak towards the potential and the purpose. That's what I told the guys when they came Indian to impact. I'm not looking at the stuff on the inside or outside. There's something to honor. There's gold inside of everyone. I'm connecting with that. If I can connect with that, you just reach a purpose bigger than yourself that will allow you to transcend what you're going through and will deal with the issues on the way. But that's my focus. Man, you can see these guys get breath back in their air. Breath back in their air. Breath back in their lungs. Yeah, I'm a professional. Uh, Bill Johnson quote. I just got this this morning and threw it in here. We love it when people humble themselves under the mighty hand of God. But we are not always as happy when God exalts them in due time. So there's a we're going to get into this a little bit because as people are promoted, you know, Rhonda and I are kind of like 11th hour people coming in here. A year ago, I didn't know any of you. I just met, you know, I, I just met Don, and but God moved us here, and we've had extreme favor since we've been here. Phil is one of our biggest cheerleaders. I'm going to talk about that on another point down here. And so, a path to promotion. That actually should have been after this. A path to promotion. Um, I'm guessing that, I put this in a question form, but I'm just going to put it in a statement. I'm fairly sure that everyone here wants to operate in a fashion of who God says you are and in the fashion of the prophetic words over you that have been proclaimed and have a platform of influence to influence the earth for his kingdom. Does anybody not have that desire? Oh, good. <laughs> okay. Again, laid down lovers. So all of us, you know, and Rhonda and I love to champion people in all of those things. You know, that, that's just, we get the most joy. I don't know if it's in one, two, three, John, them little books in the back, and one of them, it says, nothing gives me more pleasure than to see my little children doing the will of, will of God. You know, that verse, I just, yeah, I get that. You know, you came from here, and look at you now. And, uh, so all of us have this desire to have more influence, to operate in more power and all of this. And the pathway to that is, quote Don from last Sunday, love first, then wisdom, then power. That's why the verse before, humble yourself, and then he will exalt you. In due season. That due season is kairos. It says in due time, but it's actually kairos. We're in a kairos moment right now. This is a time that we are in. That's why God is shifting people around. That's why he moved us. We just bought a house, some land, and an RV, and two boats up there, and then God said, well, why don't you move to Florida? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sold it all, gave away, here we are. Why? Because he's shifting people, you know? And uh, because it's a moment. And we're like, we're like 11th hour, so it would be really easy for people to say, huh, they just got here. What's he doing up there talking? Be careful with that. I'm going to quote Graham Cook now. All public victories are preceded by private ones. Everything I'm talking about here boils down to an issue of the heart. To posture ourselves to to take care of this revival well. Bill says, Bill Johnson's, I heard him say this a long time ago, we've seen revivals that came out of purity, we've seen revivals that have come out of power, but we've yet to see one sustain itself where the power and the purity are together. That's why he has sustained that revival. They have, 
the other brilliance is he's not doing it all by himself. He has people trained and ready, and, and they all maintain that laid down lover. That's what's, that's what's doing it. Then it takes care of the hard issues, like someone comes in and God says, yeah, you're supposed to do this. Well, thought I should be doing that. Careful with that. Careful with that. Okay, all public victories are preceded by private ones. You have to, to take territory, first you have to in, deal with the internal territory. And then you go out. Like that one. She can walk places, the rest of us get our butts handed to us for being there. But she can walk there because she knows how she, she knows who she is, she knows her identity, she has a love for them people. She's not going there for another notch in her belt to make her look like super evangelist. Hey, look what I did. No, it's out of the gratitude for what God has done in her life that she can be a warrior in the war zones. That goes over here, too. I won't go places you go, girl. <laughs> it's, uh, oh, I just said I won't. Now I'm probably going to have to. I never wanted to move back where it's hot either. I said I never will. So, um, <laughs> don't laugh at me, woman. <laughs> All right. I got uh, three points under promotion. Being promoted cannot be your objective. As long as it is, your promotion will be delayed or short-lived. Motives of the heart. Are you serving the Lord or do you have a personal agenda of being seen and known? Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and in due time he will exalt you. So the very fact, if you desire a position or if you get jealous over someone else's promotion, that's evidence that you're not ready. It's just like when, Saul, um, when Samuel was going to anoint the next king and all of David's brothers, the tall, kingly-looking ones, were lined up. I'm ready, look at me. He said, no, that's ain't it. Isn't there another one? Well, there's a ruddy kid out there. He watches the lambs and worships. Yeah, bring me there. He, he was just a worship leader out there leading a the congregation of sheep, and, but he knew the God from protecting them. He had a personal relationship with God. He was a laid-down lover. He ended up being a king and a man after God's own heart. He was not perfect. It was not performance-based. But he knew how to repent, he knew how to worship, and he knew how to love God and be loved by God. And I taught too many times probably the book Spiritual Authority by uh, Watchman Nee. We, we had a school up at the other church and I taught there. And uh, that book scared off more than a few students. It's uh, some powerful truths, but it's not put out in a real palatable way. But if you can pull the principles out of it, it's really good. But eh, it, it, it will uh, sometimes offend the mind, and that reveals the spirit. So the you know, rebellion sitting there in, in the room trying to be all Christian-y, going to school, and that book will surface it. <laughs> Say, What? Ah, I ain't doing this. I quit school. I don't. One, one, <laughs> one particular person um, had to go get private tutor lessons for that class with our pastor because he used a little more kid gloves than me. He got her through the semester. <laughs> um, all right. So if that if that's your objective, if promotion or climbing the ranks like in the worldly fashion of authority if you want you want the position so you can be the man you just showed you're not ready for it um, 
this whole thing came out of God was speaking to me just over and over, just bless and do not curse, bless and do not curse, bless and do not curse. Um, and so I, so I went to the verses, and that's what I'm going to close with is the verses after these three points. Um, it all comes down to point number two. Promotion all comes down to your love affair or relationship with him, being a laid-down lover. There's two kinds of knowledge. If you go into Second Peter 1, I think verse 2 and 3, Verse 2 says something about your knowledge of Jesus Christ. Verse 3 says the true knowledge of Jesus Christ. Huh, those are different. And I have a keyword Bible, and I went, oh, they have different strong numbers. Knowledge is gnosis. Clear and exact knowledge about someone. If Rick just told me about you, I would have gnosis about you. Oh, all right, well, he, he told me what, what Sue is like. Now I have knowledge about her. So that verse, sorry, that verse talks about the knowledge of Jesus Christ. You can learn a lot about him right here. The next verse says, in the true knowledge of Jesus Christ. It's a compound word. It's epignosis. Super or supra imparted knowledge through relationship through which all spiritual blessings and gifts are given. Promotion. It all comes through a love affair, your relationship, your epignosis with him. He's, the, he's all authority. He's the one that promotes. And it comes out of that laid down lover. Everything comes out of that laid down lover. Third, bless and do not curse. This is the vaccination right here. Rhonda and I were part of the same church for 27 years. I came from the drunk guy wanting to pick a fight and then I had my experience with Jesus that changed me from the inside out by him loving me when I was not lovable. And, uh, and the people there did also. For four years while I was sitting there drunk in the front row trying to pick a fight, they wouldn't take it. They loved me and they did this. All right, it's hard, but I see Jesus in him, you know. <laughs> and they never confronted me about my obvious issues. Um, but we were there long enough to see the church get up to here, and then pff, what happened? It's dead in here. It was so alive just a couple months ago. Ah, this was happening. There was jealousy, gossip, envy, and anger. It all boils down to the heart. And just like Rhonda could sense my heart going south, she sat me down. By the way, everyone should have people that you love and trust that can say, <clears throat> sit down, let's talk. So Rhonda said, Steve, can we talk? I sat down, <sighs> took all my defenses down. If she's got something to say, it's for my own good. I'm going to receive it. I'm not going to argue. I'm just going to take it. I'm going to hear her. And that's when she had that talk. And I already knew. Because, and I'm getting better, I haven't had to be sent on a 30-day sabbatical in quite a few years. <laughs> I take daily ones. <laughs> um, but, <clears throat> take the defenses down in here. Everyone needs moms, dads, pastors, whoever, that have the permission to speak into you. Hebrews 13, 17 says, Obey those over, in the Lord, over you in the Lord, for they keep watch over your soul. And they will give an account for you. Let them do this with glee rather than 
whatever. Yeah, yeah, groaning rather than with groaning, for that would be unbeneficial to you. Oh, everyone needs someone outside of themselves to help them discern themselves. And so in all them years up there, when things started going south, it's because, oh, that person over there got mad because this person got promoted. They used to be right down here in the front row. Look, now they're back there. Oh, now they're over there. Oh, look, now they got the seat by the door. Oh, crud. They got two pewfuls back there on their way out. This is it right here. So, I'm going to read the verses that go with this and then land this thing. This is not like a dance up and down the aisle kind of message, but this is promoting body health. Like I said, if you guys can take this vaccination and then we get the herd immunity going. Rhonda and I both did, we do personality tests with people. We have a six month program of mentorship we do with people. And we do personality tests and we did them on ourselves. We're both defender personalities. We become very uh, protective over people and places that we love. And so I'm, I'm doing this in that spirit. God is cooking some stuff here. He already has. And how we steward that seed. I think Don talked about the seed. It's not an apple yet, but that seed is planted. If we rejoice, and God is big on unity. And he really has some harsh words for those that cause division. It will not be profitable for you. So... So here it is, Romans, uh, I don't even know what chapter I didn't write. Oh, 12. Romans 12, 9 through 18. Love must be free of hypocrisy. Detest what is evil. Cling to, do, cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Giving preference to one another in honor. The literal translation of that is, outdoing yourself in the giving of honor. You need to be honorable and growing in honor. Outdo your... Uh, yeah, giving preference to one another in honor. Not lagging behind in diligence, fervent in the Spirit, serving the Lord, rejoice, rejoicing in hope, persevering in tribulation, devoted in prayer, contributing to the needs of the saints, practicing hospitality, and this is the verse that got me started down this road. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Graham Cook calls them grace growers. Uh, that's the part about authentic authority. When you have them grace growers that are setting a bomb off in your congregation, you know, the power of the tongue, you know. At impact, when I had when I had 15 guys there, you could walk in some days and you just feel the healing going on in there because there's unity in the house and everyone is for each other and everyone is maintaining their heart. I could leave for a couple of days, come in and before I even talk to anyone and go, all right, what happened? I feel it in this place. Oh, well, he didn't do this. Yeah, but he didn't do that. I've seen guys actually break probation for getting in a fight and go to prison because they had time hanging over them head over who didn't take their turn doing the dishes. That doesn't just happen in sober homes. That happens in pews. There, there's Ephesians 4. I filter everything through the last half of that. The fivefold ministry is here until we reach the unity of faith unto the full stature of Christ in love, the building up of the body. And so, one of the fruits of the Spirit is self-control. Dietrich Bonhoeffer has a chapter in one of his books called The Ministry of Holding One's Tongue. So, 
Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. That's a promotion thing. I have a prophetic... I don't. I'm using this as an example. I have a prophetic word spoken over me. Again, this is not a true one. People ask me not to worship loud. I have a prophetic word that I'm called to lead worship. Huh. Who does he think he is? You know, or... I'm called to preach. And Don gets a pew all the time. <laughs> There's a very vivid example with Moses and his sister Miriam. When, you know, he was a prophet. He was the one that God talked with face to face. And his sister gathered the assembly of elders and all the leaders in the camp and confronted him with the question, do you think you're the only one that hears from God? God said, Moses, get out of the way. I'm going to open up the earth and swallow them up. Here's what true authority did. Moses prostrated himself, I think him and Aaron, and interceded for those people that were persecuting him. It's another sign of leadership is people can throw bombs at you. What do you do? Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. When someone else gets a promotion that you was hoping would be yours, recognition, all of that, if you get offended by that rather than rejoicing, again, <laughs> Your promotion just got delayed. That just proved that you weren't ready. Uh, the reason you weren't promoted is because issues of the heart. The only way to maintain the heart is to remain laid down lover. Uh, be of the same mind with one another. Do not be haughty in mind. Associate with the lowly. Do not be wise in your own expect estimation. Never repay evil for evil to anyone. Respect what is right in the sight of all men. If possible, so far as it depends on you, be at peace with all people. We are to be laid down lovers. No one is safe from a blessing when they're around us. Bless and do not curse those that persecute you. No one should be safe from us blessing them. And... No one can be my enemy without my permission. There's uh, another thing. I, I just have so much respect for Bill Johnson. A lot of people attack him. And he's such a humble and gracious man. That's why he, I've heard it said of him um, by someone that's around him. He says, the thing that Bill, though it makes him so powerful, is he carries the presence of God like no one else. That's because if he practices things like this, he blesses people when they, and high profile, ripping him to shreds. You know, all, all those Christian watchdog agencies say, be careful. Uh, I could go down the road, I'll stop. I'm going to let you guys go here shortly. Um... Promotion is directly related to our understanding of authority. It's not a matter of talent or performance, but it's a rather of the heart. When we become jealous or angry over someone else being promoted, our heart needs to soften in the presence of the Lord until his heart is our heart. David in the Psalms, he was very honest. He had all of the emotions that can get you in trouble but he brought him to God. And he said, search my heart, O Lord. If there's anything in me that is not your heart, take it. The Bible has a common thread that runs from Genesis all the way through Revelation that when we see something that triggers us, we should look at our own bad self. The reason I would notice something wrong with Dave, because it's an issue I got. That's how I recognize it. 
but I'd rather point at his and people won't see mine, right? I mean, that, that's what, uh, it's called projection, you know, I went to school to be a chemical dependency counselor, it's called projection. People will point out your problems so they don't look at your own. Um, if we continually allowing to speak, allowing the Father to speak to our heart issues, we will not even be able to find much time to address others. We're all a work in progress, honey. You know, if I'm tending my business, I ain't got time. I don't want to control anyone else. I got my hands full controlling myself. Um, <laughs> rejoice when others rejoice. Celebrate their promotion. It's the same thing as when you come in here and you don't feel like worshiping, that's probably the most important time to worship. It fixes you. It's the same way as if <clears throat> Rob gets promoted for something that I wanted to be promoted, and if I get jealous instead of celebrate with him, I just proved why I wasn't promoted because it's a hard issue. We need to champion one another. Uh, how late am I getting? Too late? Oh, yeah. Time to wrap it up, Steve. All right. Ephesians 4, Let no unwholesome word come out of your mouth, for if there is any good word for edification according to the need of the moment, so that it will give grace to those that hear. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. The word grieve means stop the flow. Do not stop the flow of the Holy Spirit by whom you are sealed for the day of redemption. All bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and slander must be removed from you along with all malice. That should keep you busy right there. I looked up malice. I thought that meant like with malice and foresight, you're planning something, you know, I'm going to get you revenge. I looked it up. It just means any bad feeling towards someone. Okay. That'll keep you busy. Be kind to one another, compassionate, forgiving each other, just as God has forgiven you. Promote others. Here is something I told you that Rhonda and I have always been supporting Cass. And we're really, I love it. I got a, it's, it's a place of influence without the headaches of <laughs> leadership, you know. And uh, um, so Rhonda and I love promoting others. Uh, that's what we do. But there's a cool principle there. I watched a guy that hosted a lot of conferences and, and, and things, and he did all this stuff together, but he was never the main act. He always brought in people and promoted them. And as he promoted others, he got promoted in the updraft along with them. It's, it's just a reap and sow. And this is where I wanted to embarrass Phil for a minute. No one has championed Rhonda and I, like you and your wife, since we've been here. That is why you are in the seas, and I gave you a word, and then Bethel confirmed it. That because you have been such a servant, because you have been such a promoter of others, you've been selfless, you've humbled yourself, that God is exalting you. You, you cannot become a spiritual father without learning how to be a true son. And you've done that. You've got the well done, good and faithful son. And you're in a season of promotion. He's bringing sons under you. They're going to take care of a lot of the details that, that you've taken care of. And because you've championed people so well, God is championing you right now. And it's a whole new season of authority and fatherhood for you. That's my object lesson for what I'm preaching right here. And... Uh, Father, Son, spiritual should be just like it is in the natural. In the natural, moms and dads want to pay the price and do things so that the next generation doesn't have to go through everything that they did to go farther. It's the same thing. Should never be holding back. Your natural mom and dad, at least the ideal one, 
Um, you know, the cleavers. <laughs> if you grew up in the cleaver home, um, would champion the kids just to be everything they're supposed to be and, and sacrifice so that the kids don't have to. That's what authentic mom and dads do. The best definition of love I've heard was from Pastor Dan in Atlanta. It says, the definition of love is your good at my expense. That's authentic spiritual mom and dads. And the only way you become a spiritual mom and dad, an authentic one, is to become a true son. Like Paul called Timothy, my true son. Everything we do is relational. Everything is a matter of the heart. God blesses unity. And we're in a place of unity right now that God kisses all on. And when this place gets full, we're going to have to make sure our hearts stay here, laid down lovers, so that, so that the hand grenades don't start going off in the pews and become that distraction that distracts you and isolates you from the very thing God is doing. So we have to keep our hearts pure. We want to operate in the power and purity so that this revival that we're in and it's growing is sustained so that our kids can be leading revival here. All right, that's it. One more time. Hand on the heart, hand on the head. I'm going to close with prayer. Jesus, I thank you for this vaccination. I thank you for these true hearts. <laughs> Wednesday night crowds knew all this already. That's why they're here on Wednesday night. But God bless them for their faithfulness. God bless them as they go out from here and they invest their time in you. That they seek your face and everything comes after that. <laughs> that uh, let it be an experience with Philippians 4, starting as they leave this place, ongoing, that as they do the things in that verse, as they are not, as they rejoice in all things, as they pray with gratitude, that the peace of, that they are not anxious, they don't get distracted, they keep focused on you and your face, eye to eye, face to face, and then as they practice that, the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard their heart and their mind precisely where the enemy can play with us. That ain't his playground no more. It's yours. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. That's it, folks. I went a little... I apologize for going a little long. You're dismissed.